Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My name is Heather Magatu. I am Vice President, External Relations for SAIT, and it's my pleasure to, to welcome you here this afternoon. Before we begin, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge how fortunate we all are to be gathered here together today in this beautiful, beautiful place that we call home. The Blackfoot tribes of southern Alberta called this place Mokinstis, meaning elbow, which describes the, the location at the confluence of the Bow and Elbow Rivers. Since time immemorial, this has been a gathering place for Indigenous peoples and tribes of the Blackfoot Confederacy. Today, the area encompasses the Indigenous people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta, the Sigziga, the Gainai, the Pekani, the Sutena, the Stony Nakoda First Nations, and the Northwest Métis Homeland Region 3. Welcome to SAIT and to our Heavy Equipment Lab. Thank you for joining us for today's important announcement from the Government of Alberta. And a special welcome to our guest, Deputy Premier and Minister of Skilled Trades, Casey Madu, here for today's announcement. Thank you for coming, and I'd like to invite the Minister to the podium. Thank you uh, so much, Heather, for welcoming us to this wonderful facility. You know, I didn't know how big and how huge uh, Nate is, but um, you can see that this is a great Alberta institution, so I am grateful. So I am very pleased to be here and to share some exciting news on what we are doing to help the skilled trades in Alberta. From the one of our government, Premier Smith made the skilled trades and apprenticeship program a priority. That is why we have a dedicated Ministry of Skilled Trades and Professions. Alberta's economy has momentum, and we offer an attractive economic landscape that encourages business to invest and grow. We are welcoming new investors and becoming more diversified, and we are seeing a corresponding need for more skilled workers as demands on industry increase. More and more people are also becoming aware of the many opportunities Alberta has to offer. Immigrants are bringing their skills and expertise to Alberta and building their careers, families, and lives. The government of Alberta is committed to meeting growing industry demands and making sure there are jobs and opportunities available for all Albertans. To continue to lead the country and remain competitive in the global ec economy, we need to build our talent pipeline. Apprenticeship education plays a vital role in expanding this pipeline with the skilled trades, supporting virtually every aspect of industry in some ways. Government, working with industry and stakeholders, must ensure our young people see the value and high career rewarding opportunities in skilled trades. As Minister of Skilled Trade and Profession, I am committed in achieving the parity of esteem in this critical sector of our economy. This is why I am happy to announce that we are investing $900,000 to increase apprenticeship seats at SAIT for the 2022-2023 academic year. This funding will increase 134 new seats in eight apprenticeship programs here at SAIT. We are empowering Albertans to develop the job-ready skills they need to be successful and build rewarding careers and making sure employers have access to the skilled workers they need to build or grow their businesses. By aligning these new learning opportunities with Alberta's priority industry sectors, we are helping industry develop the talent they need, connecting Albertans to good-paying jobs, and building key partnerships between post-secondary institutions, industry, and employers. This seat expansion supports the goal of the Building Alberta 2030, building skills for job strategy by providing more students with flexible and innovative learning opportunities that help them develop skills for jobs. We have also invested a record $600 million over three years on the Alberta at Work initiatives to help workers develop new skills 
And so we can attract more skilled talent, entrepreneurs, and students from around the world. Last year, my colleague, Advanced Education Minister Dimitris Nikolaides, announced the largest targeted post-secondary seat expansion in Alberta's history, creating 10,000 new seats in programs that support key areas of industry, such as business administration and management, engineering, and technology. Strategic, targeted investments that support the development of our, a skilled level force will ensure Alberta continues to drive the economy of this country. We are grateful for the vision and leadership of our post-secondary institutions like SAIT for working with us and Alberta's industry to prepare the students of today for the Alberta of tomorrow. I do want to thank you once again for hosting us at your wonderful facility and thank you for having me here this afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Minister Medu. This is very welcome news. As a leading Alberta Polytechnic, SAIT is proud to advance rewarding careers in the skilled trades as they provide important contributions to our communities and to Alberta's growing economy. As Alberta's economic landscape continues to change and diversify, SAIT's graduates continue to enjoy strong employment outcomes, a testament to the strength and importance of applied education. Government's continued support of SAIT, including our trades programming, highlights our ongoing commitment to ensure our graduates have the skills, the experience, and the certification the workforce needs and that industry demands. Increasing apprenticeship seats at our institution will support those pathways to success. We talk a lot about student success here at SAIT, readying our students to be skilled, experienced, valuable contributors to industry and to the economy. Preparing them for successful careers and lives is our core business, and we have a great success story here with us today. Mike Hughes graduated from SAIT in 2013 from the Diesel Equipment Technician Program, and again in 2015 through an apprenticeship in the Heavy Equipment Technician Program. He is graduating from SAIT again this month with a diploma in Business Administration, a true lifelong learner. Mike worked in industry until 2021 when he started teaching a Women in Trades program and then moved into a full-time instructor role in the same, for the same programs that he took while he was here as a student at SAIT. Mike was an instructor up until November of last year when he began a new role as interim academic chair in our School of Transportation. Mike is also president of the Alberta Fleet Maintenance Supervisors Association and a big supporter and volunteer for Skills Alberta. I'd like to invite Mike up to the podium to say a few words. Thanks, Heather. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> Uh, I'd just like to say a few words, and as a former student here at SAIT and a proud alumnus, uh, I did go through the heavy equipment program. Um, it offered a world-class experience in relevant hands-on training uh, from dedicated instructors. Uh, my experience at SAIT set me up for success with the knowledge, the confidence, and the skills needed uh, to excel in industry. Uh, I'll always acknowledge that my experience and my education here at State was a significant contributing factor to my success in industry. Uh, eventually, I did have an opportunity to reciprocate uh, by sh sharing my knowledge and skills um, with our future generation. And as an instructor, I worked with a really enthusiastic group of other instructors um, who were focused on developing these hand skills and the skill sets needed for you know, future mechanics and future technicians to, to succeed as well in our incredible industry. Uh, working through various capacities in, in my trade, uh, it became very clear that uh, careers maintaining equipment used in oil and gas, you know, civil construction, agriculture, and transportation are critical to the Albertan and Canadian economies. So not only do our highly skilled heavy equipment mechanics um, help ensure projects are completed on time uh, and help ensure that uh, crops are harvested and goods are delivered, uh, but they ensure that supporting roles and supporting industries are, remain uninterrupted. Uh, working at SAIT has awarded me many amazing opportunities to network and communicate with our industry partners. Uh, a current and common theme 
uh, not only with heavy equipment, but in other transportation and manufacturing industries, um, is a shortage in available skilled labour. So there is an urgent need to provide qualified and capable talent to fill these roles. SAIT's programs are critical in supporting key Alberta industries with a pipeline of knowledgeable and talented uh, individuals who have the competencies uh, required to provide employers with effective solutions to their issues. Uh, I think I speak on behalf of the School of Transportation and industry as well. Uh, I want to extend my gratitude and appreciation um, to the Government of Alberta who has invested in creating more seats for apprentices, uh, enabling state to prepare even more students for careers that are vital to our economy. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mike, and uh, we're so proud of you and your accomplishments. Thank you to everyone for being here with us today. This concludes the formal portion um, of our presentation. We do um, have an opportunity for some questions. Um, and uh, also a, a photo opportunity. So we will uh, move forward with that. Uh, but again, on behalf of SAIT, Mr. Minister, thank you to you and your colleagues with the Government of Alberta for your ongoing support of our students. We're truly grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That uh, concludes uh, the formal part of our announcement. And now we'll proceed and move on to our media question and answer. Uh, we'll start the questions on the floor before moving on the phones. And if, the, and if time permits, we'll come back to the floor again. You're invited to ask one question and one follow-up. And I hope you can uh, stick to the topic of the day and, uh, as much as possible. And uh, we'll take questions now. Okay. Any questions from the floor? Not fantastic. No questions from the floor. Thank you very much for that. Um, now let's move on to our phones operator. Can we please Thank put the through the first call? From Tim. Thank you, Tim Brook, CBC, uh, CTV. Go ahead, Tim. Hey, Minister. Uh, thanks. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I, I asked you about this initiative yesterday. I just had one a supplemental question today on, on something different. Um, I just want to ask you, uh, as the Deputy Premier uh, and as the former Justice Minister, I know you can speak to this, uh, we, we're seeing a new survey that talks a little bit about crime in our province and the level of concern Albertans have. Uh, I know your government has announced a couple of initiatives this week to try to curb that crime. Um, in your opinion, I just want to know what role will crime prevention and, and law and order play in the upcoming election? Uh, well, uh, thank you, Tim, for uh, that question. Uh, public safety uh, is uh, critically important in any uh, society. Uh, government's number one responsibility is to keep its people uh, and properties um, safe. And I think what you are seeing is Albertans um, voicing their concerns at uh, the rate at which we are experiencing public disorder, violent crimes, not just in our urban centers, but also across the province. Um, I, I, there is no question that public safety is in the minds of our Albertans. If you are in Edmonton, like myself, um, you, you barely want to go to the downtown at night. We've seen uh, report after report, incident after incident of violence and public disorder around China, Chinatown. We see the same thing here in Calgary as well. So we as a government uh, take that very seriously and that is why we have invested money and human resources. We've deployed the men and women of law enforcement, the sheriffs to work with our police services uh, to deal with this particular issue, and we will not rest until there is um, law and order in our communities, in our cities and towns. Any follow-up questions, Tim? Uh, yeah, you, you poked at it a little bit there, but it, you know, you mentioned Chinatown. I, I, I know your riding is a little bit more uh, suburban. 
are, are you hearing from people when you're when you're at the doors? Or are you hearing from constituents that that you know they're worried about crime right now, that they're afraid to go downtown, either in your riding or even outside of it in, in rural Alberta or in Calgary? Ab absolutely, I do hear that at the doors every single day that I am out. Um, the, the people in my community in Edmonton Southwest, uh, there are uh, professionals, there are business owners. Uh, they walk in downtown. They go to downtown to dine uh, with their friends, families, and loved ones. Um, I have a lot of uh, um, Albertans of Chinese origin in my riding. Uh, we, they come to me from time to time to complain about the level of disorder in, in Chinatown. Um, there is no question that this is a concern that the government at all levels in this province uh, um, must tackle. As I said before, government's number one responsibility is the safety of its people. And I think we will be failing Albertans if we did not confront the, uh, the level of violence and crime that we have seen in, in, in most of our urban centers, especially in Edmonton and Calgary. Thank you. And uh, any, uh, any more uh, callers on the line? Operator? There are no additional questions at this time. Thank you. That concludes our question and answer portion. And uh, any uh, media in-house, uh, we have a photo op after this. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time today.